It's not okay. This country is being pummeled. It's Tim Wilms here for The Unshackled and I've just finished viewing for the first time at mm. Topher Fields Battleground Melbourne which uh, was the feature freedom film at the 2022 Melbourne Underground Film Festival Muff. I'm here with the filmmaker himself, Topher Field and having seen it for the first time, not wanting to have seen it because mm. a lot of people don't want to relive the trauma my main fair. my main takeaway is how insane it all was <laughs> yeah without doubt and uh, you know it's, it's a hard film to watch uh, it is and I, I completely understand why some people don't really want to watch it uh, it was a very difficult film to make as well for all the same reasons um, it, it was absolute madness and the rest of the world looks at us and and goes what is wrong with you the yeah, Melbourne what is wrong with you Victoria what is wrong with you Australia that you put up with this um, and, and we it, it, we seem to be the slowest at actually realizing just how insane we were the rest of the world can see it but it seems to be a very slow process getting Australians and Victorians to kind of realize just how crazy it was uh, so it's December 2022 mm. uh, about a year after the film's events wrapped up and well it's one week after the state election uh, Dan Andrews was returned but in terms of the we, we heard about the the, the science and uh, the obviously the the narrative one year later it's like uh, St Kilda's buzzing here where we are it's like it all never happened I disagree. I, I think it probably seems like it's buzzing because of uh, your reference point is the last couple of years. But, if, you know, I, I know this area quite well. I used to be a salsa dancing teacher and we used to have a lot of parties and clubs around here, around Fitzroy and various parts of inner city Melbourne. And I remember those areas when they were actually buzzing, when they were actually humming. Uh, and it's it's it has not come back to that yet. Now, I'm not saying it won't. And I, and I do hope it does recover. I don't wish ill on my beloved home city. Uh, at all but what we will never get back even if we do get back to that same vibrancy that same busyness that same fun what we'll never get back is the two years and what people will never get back is all of the savings that they were cleaned out of and people say oh well it's just money no it's not just money that's years of someone's life putting aside savings and it's years it, it's someone's future that savings was going to go into something into a house into a car into a holiday into an education for the kids into whatever it was going to be retirement fund all of that's been lost and it can't be replaced just by St Kilda getting busy again uh, there's an enormous amount that's been lost uh, people had to say goodbye to loved ones over zoom instead of in person they never got to have those last conversations those last you know handholds those those moments are gone for a lot of people and they cannot be brought back no matter what happens on the streets of St Kilda oh, I definitely agree like I'm just talking about the superficial mm. outside but the the trauma the the devastation mm. uh, the suffering that people went through that is permanent and as I was just uh, we, were, we were out in the lobby before and uh, well it's because it, you said it was hard for you to make this mm. film uh, what's it been like to have people come up to you like we just saw before uh, say congratulations on, yeah. on 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 doing this what's that's that affirmation type because it's the first document feature documentary that you've made as you said yeah look it's the process of making it nearly killed me um, and I, I wish I meant that metaphorically unfortunately I don't um, but I got through that I've got wonderful people in my life and and got through that and um, what's happened since then has just been the most beautiful thing because I'm I'm able to share this with the world thanks to all the people that financed the documentary and made it possible for me to make it I didn't have to then make money out of it and so I was able it's online for free you can watch it at battlegroundmelbourne.com you don't have to pay anyone any money you don't have to sign up to anything there's no email address you just go to battlegroundmelbourne.com and there it is watch it and that's because of the the backing that I had to make it but what I was able to do then uh, people were asking can I see it in cinemas I said, well, why? It's online. You can watch it for free. No, no, no. I want to see it in cinemas. So I did a cinema tour and we went to, I think in the end, nearly 20 different cinemas around um, metropolitan Melbourne and, and regional Victoria. And that actually became one of the most beautiful sort of healing times in my life because what you saw in the foyer just then is just a tiny little bite you know we would have anywhere up at some, at some showings we had over 400 people 450 people at, at the premiere had hundreds of people at other showings and I would have them just almost literally lining up afterwards wanting to give me a hug wanting to shake my hand wanting to say thank you and that 
actually was just the most wonderful thing for me uh, and really helped to sort of lift me out of where I was at emotionally. Because this is a local audience, uh, there was quite a bit of laughter hearing uh, Dan Andrews uh, decree the, the the science. There was there was that that's the the vibe that I got because the overwhelming, I would say, exclusively the people in this crowd relived it, and obviously we all relive and uh, in some cases grieve in in different ways. Yeah. And it, it was that insane that you just laughed at some of it. Oh, especially when you get Daniel Andrews coming out proudly announcing that he's always been a big supporter of the right to protest. And, <laughs> you know, things, I mean, he actually said that. He had, like, this is the lack of self-awareness. This is the narcissism that he just thinks he can say something and it just becomes true. Um, and, and it's nice to be in a cinema full of people that actually give that sort of thing the mockery that it deserves. Yeah, I just, I just laugh right then. <laughs> you you, 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 you re retelling it. Now... Obviously, I, as I said, like it's been a year since mm. well, the the lockdown period ended, and so superficially for and for those people who didn't suffer uh, as much during mm. lockdown, mm. 2022 has been pretty normal, and we've even seen the the Chinese Communist Party just give up on COVID zero because of protesters who i mean if you thought that's the people, unfolding right now yes it's, it's unclear exactly how that's going to go but yes yes but like obviously the people you interviewed for your film were brave but they were even braver over oh, there does this signify so. the end of this the, uh, this sort of covid focus what's I, coming next do you think look i, I wish it did I, you know we're seeing a uh, spike in cases here in victoria we're hearing different uh, oh, yes. different paranoid um pearl clutching uh people in the media and in government etc saying oh we need to reintroduce mask mandates and various other things like that and daniel andrews of course at the uh, at the end of last year got himself these permanent pandemic powers that he hasn't had the chance to try out yet so i i can only imagine that he would be sitting there looking for an opportunity to declare a pandemic and and play with all of these new powers that he fought so hard for um, no, unfortunately, I don't think we've seen the end of COVID, and we certainly haven't seen the end of this growth of government power. Oh, no, definitely um, not. That's, that's just going to morph and change shape, and, and they'll, they'll use whatever guise is available to them at whatever time. Um, but no, I, I, unfortunately, I don't think we've seen the end of COVID yet either. I, on the non-COVID front, mm. a re-elected Dan Andrews uh, for the next four years in Victoria. Mm. Uh, what do you see there? Well, more of what we've had, only, only potentially even more so. I mean, he's a narcissist. I, I would argue he's probably a psychopath, but he's certainly a narcissist. Um, and being re-elected now would just feed all of his sort of God um, fantasies that he's got about himself. So what we're going to see now is, is he's going to be even more brutal and ruthless at a political level in terms of making sure that only his sycophants get onto the cabinet, uh, only people that, uh, that are, you know... Uh, on his page ever get to contribute to anything in public life we've seen uh the, the the shameful ousting of a ceo of a football club because the government didn't like them we've now seen the liberal party capitulating to this sort of pressure that's been created by daniel andrews and his government by um disendorsing some of their own candidates on the basis of the churches that they're a part of i mean this this sort of viciousness is going to escalate a lot more let's not forget daniel andrews passed a law last year that basically made himself god uh in the form of dictating what people were and we're not allowed to pray right we're right down to that level this is not a prediction of what will happen in the future this is on the books it's the law now here in victoria uh daniel andrews believes that he's god and uh what he has now is a mandate from the people to behave like he's god so i, I think we're going to see a lot more of what we have seen only on steroids oh.